Welcome to the MMA Road Show, episode number 344. My name is John Morgan. Cole Coffee is with me, more or less. Am I? More or Am less. I? I see him making some funny little facial expressions over I there. Know, What's I was going like, on with your eye? I've never noticed my eyebrow like. I can raise that eyebrow like a crazy <laughs> psycho, but we never do video, so I'm like, I never really noticed it before. Trying to look like the rock over there or something? What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, if there's ever a person that I get mistaken for on the street, it is most definitely the rock. <laughs> I mean, People are like, brah, wh- why don't you get out of the gym, Kenny? And I'm like, no, nah, man. Gains. <laughs> It's all about personal gains, dog. <laughs> personal gains. Oh, man, that's great. Well, you, you touched on it. We're doing video. We're not actually recording the video, but this is something we can do in the future. But this is a way for us to do things. Uh, yeah. as, as I, I got to work on the eyebrow. If we're, we're going to do it more video, I got to work on it. I got to get my eyebrow game Cold on coffee point. in the people's eyebrow. They definitely want to see it. Uh, <laughs> no, listen, I just, got, I just got off a plane, and uh, I'm in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania now, whereas you are still back home in beautiful Las Vegas, I will be uh, calling Fury Professional Grappling 2 on UFC Fight Pass on Friday night, along with my man CM Punk. Uh, CFSC 102 is going to be on Saturday night here in Philadelphia. I will not be working that event, but I'll actually be attending as a fan, I guess. Maybe sit out in the crowd, have a little frosty beverage or two, but the man Chase Hooper is filling in for me there, so it'll be Chase Hooper and CM Punk on the mic for that one. And uh, yeah, so we're apart today, but obviously we're not going to break the streak. We're not like we're not like Bruce Buffer. We're just going to give up on the streak and just let it be broken. You know what I'm saying? Three. Oh, that's cold. Nah. <laughs> that's cold. Well, at least at least when they're bringing in Chase, you guys got like very similar hair. <laughs> I think. Uh, I mean, I know some people say you guys sound uh, absolutely identical, and it is virtually identical. I would say, uh, but the hair, the hair is nearly identical. The hair. For I, sure. I will say, if I let my hair grow out, if I didn't trim it and I just let it go. Uh, yes, that is exactly what it would look like. Is like Chase Hooper's hair. So, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll fill in there. Uh, but yeah, listen. All right, l- before we get you know too far into things, I just I mean I understand why people tune in, and I can't help them at this point. But I need you, Cole Coffee, to give us the Las Vegas weather update because that's really the only reason people tune in is oh. they gotta know how the weather's doing. Especially somebody actually, <laughs> somebody hit me up the other day and was like, dude, uh, I I longing. I longingly, uh, you know, I haven't been in Vegas for a minute, so one of the things I love is when you guys talk about the <laughs> Vegas weather, and I was like, you're shitting me, right? I was like, you're, you're pulling my leg, and they're like, no, 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 it makes me, uh, you know, makes me nostalgic. So for that particular person, I won't name him right now, I don't want to make him feel awkward, but it is a, a, a lovely sunny and 80 degrees mm. in Las Vegas right now. It is so wonderful. I got all the windows and the doors open, um, airing out, man, it's just, it's like we say every time, this is the, this is one of the best times of the year, and right now is probably one of the best days we've had in a while. And you know what's even better? I didn't have to drag my ass down to the UFC Apex to shoot anything today, so it's extra sunny outside right now. It's extra nice, and uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Take that everywhere else in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, it uh, it is weird, right? It's fight week. Obviously, it's UFC 267 this week. It's it what, threw it threw me off. It's it threw me off it's, big time. How long has it been since we didn't cover a fight week, man? And and it's a, it's a big one. And um, you know, obviously, I, I, I can't even remember. I, I'll be tuned it's in so many tuned in on Saturday <laughs> and excited about it. But yeah, it's been so long since we didn't do a fight week that I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of enjoying a little bit the fact that we're just you know didn't didn't have to do any research for media day not worried about getting up and shooting photos tomorrow or you know doing the weigh-ins yep. i mean uh listen didn't i have I, to pack up gear drive down uh to the apex set stuff up and and do all that stuff in fact but what kind of messed me up today the most was like yesterday bellator decides the bellator and it's going to have its or no sorry pfl mm. midweek uh fights and it completely threw me off because i was like who has who has fights on you know Wednesday night or whatever and it completely threw me off. So today when I woke up, I thought it was like even Friday or like Saturday. I was like, where am I at? What am I doing? You know, uh, I was joking on our our Slack channel. I thought it was payday. So I woke up and I was like, hell yeah, it's payday. And I was like, oh fuck no, it's Thursday. I'm still broke. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to the bar. But I just didn't. I'm going to the bar. I'm like, oh well, I guess I'll have a I'll have a beer out of the fridge. Um. But yeah, it uh, it it completely. I you you know you said how long has it been? It's got to been at least like well, the contender series has been eight weeks straight, and I feel like we've been doing this straight 
well before that. Oh, yeah. Well before that. And I can't even remember. I feel like we've been doing this every weekend since the beginning of the year. Like, I am so over it. So, like, as for, like, my timing and, like, what day it is and where I'm at or anything is completely thrown off. I mean, I mean, one... It's funny because people can't see us, but John's wearing his gray shirt. I got like a bluish gray shirt on. We look almost the same, except down below, I have no pants on. Wow. Because I'm at home. Wow. I don't have to put shorts on. I don't have to do a damn thing. That is information you, you didn't definitely know that. did not have to share <laughs> whatsoever, man. I'm just seeing well, you. I mean, I got, I got my drawers on. I just ain't got no pants on. Oh, man. I'm... I mean, if it's at home. It's like when I get home, it's like you take the keys out of your, your, your pocket and you set them on the little table or desk or whatever. And then I usually follow that up with taking my shorts off. It's just like it's like taking the shoes I'm off. With you. you just get comfy. You just get comfy. So there, that it's beautiful outside and it's beautiful inside. You know what's funny <laughs> is uh, I'm actually I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a little bit of myself. Uh, I, I'm not. I currently do have pants on, but uh, one of our old. You mean shorts? Shorts. That's shorts. What, yeah. You I, mean John Morgan pants? Definitely don't have pants on. Yes, I have shorts on. Uh, but we used to have a dog named uh, uh, Vanderlei who uh, whenever I would put my shorts on in the living room, he would run to his house to get inside because he knew the only time I put shorts on was as if we <laughs> were leaving, leaving the house. <laughs> yeah, because I'm the same way. If I'm sitting around the house, I'm just rolling in boxers and a T-shirt. That's so it. The dog was so in tune that when I put my, my cargo shorts on, when I put my John Morgan pants on, as you just referred, he went straight to his uh, little house. So it was, it was kind of funny. funny. It was kind of funny. Well, listen, man, you, you touched on – and you know, and first of all, let me just throw out there – there's way worse uh, ways to make a living than what we do. So we're not trying to complain, but it's just nice to break up the monotony of it all. It's just the same yes, every single week, every sure. single week for a year. So, so it's nice, but it's been, but it's been mind. I mean, the two, I mean, it's one thing to have a, an event every week, but the, the past eight weeks, having two events a oh, week or nine weeks, whatever yeah. we're at now, uh, it's been just crazy, yeah. crazy. It, I mean, it, it's been above and beyond busy, but you're right. I mean, it's I'm grateful that we that we're able to do what we do, but enough's enough of this two week <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, and again, I'll say the caveat. You know, when we talked about it before, you're the one that has to drag like seventy pounds worth of gear everywhere too. You know what I mean? Me, I just have mm-hmm. to roll in there and set my computer up and grab a cup of coffee and I'm good to go. So uh, and at the end of the night, it's always funny that uh, the the PR staff will be like, "Hey guys, uh, you got the room for like another hour? Is that okay?" And Morgan's always first to be like, "Yeah, oh no, that's good, that's good, thanks." <laughs> and then he's, "Hey guys, I'll see you later." As he walks out the door, I was like, "Why are you even acknowledging how long?" I was like, "You're gonna fucking leave here in like ten minutes." He's like, I don't need that. As hour, my I'm ass is still sitting here editing, and I'm just like. Well, I'm glad if somebody said thank you. Where I'm like, can I have more time? Can I have more time? But, but no, everybody leaving says that that hour's good. So I guess that's fine. <laughs> the guy that's walking out of here in 30 seconds says that hour will be fine. So I guess I guess we're good. Oh man, <laughs> hilarious. Hey, listen, uh, you touched on PFL. I know we don't honestly spend a lot of time talking about PFL because obviously the viewership's a little bit smaller and just the way the schedule falls and that sort of thing. But yeah, I, I gotta I gotta say that show was good. Oh. Let me phrase it properly. It was cool. The action was good. The yeah, the fights championship were good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the pacing of that show was just was just oh, brutal. Yeah. And I don't want to go too hard on them. I mean, it's a huge block. It was a huge time block yeah. that they had to fill. So they were spreading out. I mean, I mean, what was their total? Seven fights, maybe, maybe a little bit more than that, something like that. But they had like a huge block of time, and they just spread it so long. It was. But I mean, you're right. I mean, that so it's a tough ask on them. They they kept going back to the same guys and they found themselves sort of saying the same stuff over and over and over. You know, they were talking preview some of the upcoming fights, but I mean, that's a tough gig. That's a tough ask on anybody when you have a huge amount of time to fill. Especially if it's a bunch of dudes. It's one thing if it's a bunch of attractive young ladies up there talking with it. Then you're like, "Hell, I'll just I'll, they could talk about the 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 floor." And I'm like, "I'm I'm all in." But you know it's tough when you have uh, just a, a cup, a few guys up there talking about fights over and over, the same fights over and over and over for hours and yeah. hours. It gets long, but but as for the action, uh, it was fantastic. I thought I thought it was. I had a lot of fun. Normally, a lot of times when I watch other promotions, I don't know. Maybe I'm just biased because I'm so around the UFC that I find that uh, the characters that are involved kind of have triggered me a little bit more where I'm like, oh, I want to watch this guy's fight. Oh, I want to watch this fight. So when I don't know a lot of the other characters in the other one, I need action to keep me involved or I'm ready to tune out and, and put something else on the TV. But I was completely, I was I was all in yesterday. I thought, I thought they were great fights that they put on. Um, the ones that we knew that were going to be good fights, 
lived up to the good fights and the ones that we knew were possibly questionable um, were questionable, you know, but um, there were some fights that stood out that I thought were a lot better than most people give them, give them credit. And I mean, I won't go too far cause I'll let you set up whichever, but I mean, even like the Harrison fight was a lot better than I thought it was going to yeah. be. Well, listen, the one I, the one I'd have to say was my favorite. I was going to ask you which one stood out to you the most, but dude, that Capaloza, uh Dalia fight was just insane. That was man. awesome. That was one of the, that was honestly, you know, I'd say, I mean, yeah, you know what? I want to say one of the best heavyweight fights I've ever seen. I know that may be a little too far, yeah. and I know they slowed down at the end, but I would say at least that first 10 minutes is is yeah. some of the craziest 10 minutes of a heavyweight fight I've ever seen. Now, yep. you know, you start talking about like a like a Bigfoot Mark Hunt type fight. It didn't it didn't end with as much of a, you know, a salvo as that had. It kind of slowed at the end and and you know, I don't think there was drama in the result. We knew what it was, but just the back and forth of that first 10 minutes was one of the craziest things yep. I've ever seen. And then I, I got to imagine probably the other one that, that that you would shut out would be uh would be Ray Cooper, man, with that just That's it. Oh my god. That's the one. That that was that was fantastic. I, I that was the one fight where I was like, man, uh, in terms of just going back to staff picks, I think just a couple of us thought that Ray Cooper was had the capability of doing yep. it. You know, everybody knows his strength. Everybody knows whatever. But when you look at the weigh-ins, oh, my Lord, they look like they're in two different weight classes. And uh, he, the heart that he showed out there and the power – and uh, you never knew what was going to happen. It could the fight could have went either way, and so I was completely all in on that one. And you're right when it when it comes to that heavyweight fight, the the first ten minutes, the so much heart was shown in that. Oh. that as we were like even, even the Slack channel, just like these guys are scary. Like what they were putting each other through, and then how we're able to come back from that, and then still have a, a nice decent outpouring of activity. Sure, it wasn't like the first ten minutes, but nothing could be like that. No, you know. And I thought the commentary did a good job where they they said the right thing. Where they were even like, it feels like they were watching a couple of lightweights going around out there because it didn't look like the typical heavyweights that were doing. And when you look at those two guys, those are not uh, typical heavyweights that we've seen in the past. They're built differently. Um, they come from incredible camps, and they're just they're just fantastic. I mean, I love the story. Like, I couldn't help but get all choked up watching uh, Capalosa talk. Uh, you know, seeing his family and stuff. And then we end up hearing the news afterwards oh that his family gosh. kept from him, that his father had passed um, while he was away and while he was training and while he was prepped for it, he passed away. I think that week. Yeah. Sunday. Um, they said. And they didn't, they didn't want to affect him. And then I was like, now I'm really emotional thinking about the fight. You know, it was just uh hats off to those guys. And um, I'm so happy. I would have been happy if either guy won, but after hearing that story and then watching uh, the reaction of his family. Um, I love, um, I mean, granted, the Contender Series has been doing it lately, too, with, like, the, the little watch parties. I love that glimpse into the, the families and the I teams that are watching it. I do, too. So seeing the family get into it, and, and, and every time they get on the screen or he get on the screen, you'd see that pop of emotion. And then the, the emotion on his face afterwards yeah. when he was talking to his family, I was just like, oh. And then we heard the, the bit about the dad. I was like, oh, God, please don't show the family again. Not, <laughs> please don't. Because then they would know that he, you know, that, you know, I was just like, I can't, I can't take it. I can't take no, it. No, man. I was, but it was great. It was emotional. It was just a great show, man. I mean, uh, even the prelims, you know, uh, Roushman Field, the story that he had, that you know, was awesome. a, amazing that was a good story. Fight. You know, that was a great fight. Uh, Antonio Carlos Jr. I mean, seeing Shoe Face do yep. that, it just top to bottom, man. This felt like a good show. I, again, yep. I don't want to harp on it. I mean, I know a lot of people do. It, it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know they they got to figure that pacing out, man. And I know it's probably tough when you got so many potential five round fights to figure out, you know, where to slot it and what to do. But that 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 pacing was brutal. I think that's the only thing that held him back. But as far as the fights themselves. I don't know, man. I just thought it was an amazing finish for PFL. I feel like this season they, they did gain a little bit of momentum. Now, I don't know how that's yep. going to turn into uh, you know viewership Next numbers year. and that sort of thing because it's tough. And you know what? I mean, Cole Coffey, you hit it right on the head. Now, for us, like you said, you and I – especially during during COVID, I mean, we're covering the USC every damn week. You know what I mean? So we just get to know yeah. those fighters really well because we're talking to them week in, week out. We see them week in and week out. But but that your explanation is the exact same explanation that I think almost every fan out there has. I think there's 
there's very few people that watch MMA simply because they're looking at the technique. You know what I mean? Like, oh, th- that guy's yeah. my favorite fighter because he has an amazing sidekick or whatever. No, it's you know the stories and, you, you, you know, this guy's from where you are or this girl went to school where you went to school or, you know, this person talks like you or whatever. You know, and you, you get to know them or you just like their story. You know, it's a character like Cowboy or, or whatever. You, know, you, you get to know. Like you said, it's funny because you even use the word characters instead of athletes, but it's true. Yeah. And, and I think <laughs> it's true. I think that's the hard part for all these secondary organizations, whether it be Bellator, yeah. whether it be PFL, whether it be One Championship, is just getting the audience familiar. So we'll see how the traction was, but I just thought they deserved praise because I thought there were some ph- phenomenal fights. Um, and now we've got some interesting things, right, to see where we go from here, right? Kayla Harrison, does she stay? Does she go? You yep. know, does she stick around and, and, and keep racking up the big money? Um, you know, it was Sean O'Connor. What was the deal with the Ray Cooper thing? It was like, is he a free agent or not a That's free agent? Bizarre. I don't know what was going on right there. I was so confused. I'm like, I'm hearing one thing, and then Ray's like, I don't know where you're getting your source information, you know, blah, blah. And then Ray's like, I guess I'm not a free agent. <laughs> I mean, like, but that's another one. I mean, uh, that's a that he's a he'd be a great pickup wherever. And I guess maybe even to the fact of like the pacing. When you think about if they said, "Hey guys, we got we got to spread some time. We need some advertising dollars. We're giving away six million dollars of purse." Fair. What are you What are you doing, Fair. organization? What are you guys doing over there? You guys might want to get a little quicker, whatever. But hey, we got to pay for this six million dollars that we're about to give out. <laughs> that's you know, fair. that's actually fair. You know, like man. We got if 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 Wiz Khalifa is going to give us some money, we got to give him some air time. To- <laughs> we got to give him air time. <laughs> I I only caught like a I I don't know if what I caught was like him coming back a second time in the singing or maybe if it was like a replay because I I was out of the room when he he sang the first time and then I remember later on in the broadcast he was on the screen again and I was like oh is he is he doing it again but I wasn't quite sure if that was maybe just a repeat them playing back what that's, he did that's so the first crazy time or whatever. I, I wonder if like that's like. How it was actually presented to him, like, hey, listen, we'd like for you to invest in this thing. Like, why do I want to invest in that? Well, it's kind of a time buy on ESPN, and we'll put a single in there. Are you cool with that? Like, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, good stuff. <laughs> but it was a great show. Like I said, I don't want to rag on it. Was them. A good show, I, I think it's their best season. Really a great show. I did want to ask you what your thoughts are on Clarissa Shields, right? Because I'm I'm torn a little bit, right? Because I'll be honest with you, as far as her doing what she's doing, getting into the MMA, I respect the hell out of her, man. I really yep. do. You know what I mean? Like the fact that she's willing. I mean, to be as great as she is in, in her sport, and to be willing to kind of be the rookie in another sport, man. I think that deserves all the praise in the world, and, and I yep. do. I do praise her. But, I mean, the skills, obviously you can see the skills aren't quite there yet. But how could they be this early in her career? Yep. And, and, and I saw That's a lot it. of people point it out. And, and, and I, I just I think I have to agree, and I'll see where you stand too. Um, again, I'm not trying to be critical of PFL because I want to praise them for this great show they put on. But I think they deserve to shoulder a little bit of the blame here for the matchmaking, right? I mean, you're yeah. telling me they couldn't find somebody that would just stand and bang with her? Because that's I, that's all we really want to see anyway, right? Yeah, I mean it is, but honestly, if they if they were to gave somebody that was more one dimensional than some of the ones we've seen in the past, like even the last one, um, I thought she was going to lose, but then the girl tired out, and then I was joking that it was a it was a fix because it seemed so bad that all of a sudden she was like just whooping on Clarissa while she was on top position, and then all of a sudden she just died out, yeah. and then Clarissa was able to finish her. This one, Clarissa, you could definitely tell that she had a huge amount of gains. From the last time we saw her, she's at a wonderful I camp. Agree. I mean, and with having the the physicality and the the skill set that she already had, and the de- uh, discipline and the t- determination to get to where she was in the boxing field, and then put that with um, a, some of the world's best coaches, she's going to pick up on it. And she really did. I thought she was super super impressive in terms of what she's gained. Right. But I also feel like the opponents that they've given her have been complete. Um, gimmies in the sense that they wanted her to have the best possible chance to win like if you i mean granted i know you have to put um you know her up with a like-minded especially when it comes to you know uh wins you're not going to throw up against a a 14 and you know even five or six opponent you know because she just doesn't have the mma fights but you can't take away that the fact that she is a world champion boxer that power you know things of that you got to give the opponent a little bit of some some chance to have, you know, 
some sort of something to balance that oh, out. Oh no, 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 that oh, no. Person's... no, 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 not at two and zero. Oh. Not yeah. at no, no, no. <laughs> I just put her in with some, some. I find some, I find some woman that's been training like Tybo and and wants well, to see, give a shot at MMA. <laughs> she's <laughs> like Billy Blanks is my 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 instructor. Yes. You know, I'm or calling, Billy Blanks or Billy I'm Blanks. I'm calling or Billy like Blanks, that. and I'm like Billy. <laughs> Who is your top boxer <laughs> size instructor right now? Not even the top. Not even the top. <laughs> somebody that tried it for like a month and then got tired of it. Somebody, that person. Somebody That's whose name is still want. on your mailing list 10 years <laughs> later. <laughs> just randomly pick one. Um, but see, that's the thing. I'm, I mean, I'm not in for it to just see Clarissa look great. I want to see a good fight, and I want to see her get tested. And so that's why on my end, I want the PFL to stop trying to push her forward. I get it. I mean, everybody gets it. It's it's not a, a uh, it's a no brainer that she's better to them and more valuable to them as a winner and not somebody yes. that comes in with a mediocre record, you know that that maintains a mediocre record even if it's you know three and three or three and four and heaven you know heaven forbid if she actually gets a losing record, you know to pay whatever sort of money I'm sure that they're paying for they're paying for the name value they're paying for she's a great personality I like her I mean I know some people for some reason seem to be triggered by things she said in box and other stuff but every time i've interacted with her when she came to some of the ufc events i thought she was really nice yeah. she was personable and i think she's an absolute stud when it comes to boxing but um i want to see her get challenged and i felt like we got more of that and uh but i thought that the judges made the right decision i when i heard the first um judge was scored in clarissa's favor i was like oh man please look, don't please did you don't see the look on abigail montes's <laughs> face as they read that decision she was like they should have she was so yeah. she was like are they really going to take they're gonna this away from me? she was <laughs> in her mind she was like they're gonna give this to her it was a bit, and I, I thought the exact same thing i was like you gotta be shitting me <laughs> why is this not i mean i just don't understand why it wasn't unanimous i thought she did clearly enough um, in just the two, the the second and the and the third round, with her yeah. being on top and controlling, like that should have been enough right there. Even if you, even if the first, if it looked like Clarissa got some good shots off, to me, no. I was just like, I don't understand how one judge gave it to I, her. I don't either. All right, so here's so here's so two things. First, I want to make a statement. And then second, I want to ask you a question. Hopefully, now after that matchup, I hope, and maybe everybody did already, but you know, I mean, you know me, I've I have stood in firm opposition anytime somebody goes, oh. We got to put Kayla up against Clarissa. That's the two-time gold medalist against That's the two-time ridiculous. gold. Yeah, from day one, I kept trying to explain to people that is a ridiculous notion. I don't think they'll ever compete because just their timelines aren't going to match up. Hopefully, no. everybody sees now why I was so against that. And I, you know what? I would assume mo most people that listen to this podcast are pretty educated in the game enough anyway that they probably already agreed with me anyway. But if you didn't, hopefully you do see now. But here's my question to you, Cold Coffee. Is this Clarissa Shields experiment – done like is it ruined now does this loss ruin everything is it over i don't think so and it really shouldn't if it, if it is then then uh shame on them then it was just a big gimmick a big ploy mm. i after listening to the way that she talks and and just taking what she says on face value um i believe that she's going to get better from this and i think it's just a matter of she's she's just been rushed to fight at you know even the the people that she's fighting she's fighting people that aren't just bums off the street i mean she's fighting people with legit training on one of the biggest platforms uh possible um so i don't think it's done because i believe that she is a champion as a as a as a champion in another sport and working with the right people that she has with her um they're gonna they're just gonna take it back and, and learn what one of the some of the things i thought was really really great there are moments where it looked like she was caught up too much in her opponent to really hear what her coaches were saying to get out of those positions. And I thought that's what got her the, the other, the, her previous fight. I thought, okay, she's not responding. She's, she's just turtling up. She's, she's having a hard time right. this time. There were moments where I saw a little bit of that, but for the most part, she was spot on when they told her to do stuff. Um, when they would tell her to, when, when, uh, you know, she tried the clinch would be engaged, you know, they tell her to back up, you separate and she would separate and it would work, you know? And I was like, okay, she she's obviously can hear what's going on. She's aware. So she's not being she's not getting too intimidated in these fights to 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 lose track and then just go back to, you know, uh whatever she's you know, her boxing and stuff. So like she could be trained, so she's got the mindset. I think she's got everything um to just to keep moving forward. It's just so early. I mean, yeah. it's just so early. I never expected her to 
be a champ in her first three fights or anything like that. But I mean, in, in the terms of Kayla Harrison and and her is just absolutely ridiculous. It was it was ridiculous when it first started, and even to think that it would be any time soon is ridiculous because now it's getting to the point where I'm not shying away from the fact when people say, you know, when's Kayla and, and Amanda going to start getting together? Because now when I look at what Kayla's able to do, I'm not worried about her striking. Yep. I'm not worried about her chin. And not that she's taken the most, but she took a good shot on her nose in this fight, bust her up a little bit, kind of woke her up. Yep. Um, that's going to be a big difference than Amanda Nunes, but also... They've been working together. She's not going to be. Uh, she's not going to be uh, intimidated by Amanda. I don't think anybody would intimidate her, honestly. Um, even if she never worked with her, I don't think she would be intimidated by her. But um, now, when people talk about, oh man, if Kayla comes over and gets a- 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 and meets up with Amanda, I know even Dana's like, oh, she's not ready for that yet. I wouldn't be so sure. I wouldn't be so sure. Um, but Clarissa and and Kayla is ridiculous. I mean, th- they should never even. You, you know, you. are as you said, it they're in two different time frames. Yep. One is an absolute what looks like an absolute rookie in the sport, and Kayla, even though she hasn't been in this sport for that long, does not look like a rookie right. anymore. Um, the gains that she has made, and maybe that's the difference when it comes from being coming from a striking base and coming from a wrestling base that's, or a judo base. That's a huge part. Of you it, know, I think. one one was able to she was able to build um, quicker on the striking skills that she needed with such an impressive dominating, um, ground game that she has. I mean, it's just, it's scary. So, I mean, people want to say, Oh man, it would smash her. I'm not so sure. I, I'm not so sure. And I'm ready to say that at this point after seeing Kayla. I agree. I agree. I, you know, I, I, I've, I've said all along, I hope, I hope they do fight at some time. And again, as Kayla said all along, you know, she's not going to push for it, but she does want to be yep. where Amanda is. And if they do it, you know, it's going to be a respectful situation. Amanda don't want that heat. Ah, Amanda, that just gets people fired. I'm just going to get people fired. <laughs> Amanda doesn't want that heat. Yeah, but she don't want that heat. But I love it. She said, look, if, if we do it, man, it'll just be an amazing athletic contest. You know, this is not going to be a Moscow yeah. Covington situation, nothing like that. You know, we'll just do it. So I think that would be incredible. Oh, I think it'd be amazing. I think it would be incredible. I do too. It needs to happen sooner rather than later, though. Yeah, I don't know how much. Amanda, Amanda, Amanda's got a foot out the door. I agree. I don't think she's going to be doing much longer. All right, listen, before uh, PFL, it was a uh, contender series. I did want to ask you if you had any final thoughts on uh, Javid Basharat and his uh, – the, 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 I, I, I was really surprised that he came in sounding like wh- – where's he from, London or whatever? His <laughs> accent. I was like – I was like – what I was like, is this a joke? It was is funny. Yeah, I not, thought we were gonna. I thought we were gonna have to have a translator, and I was yeah. like, oh, bro, <laughs> it's pretty funny. I just, you know, it's funny, and, and uh, man, I have gotten a ton of backlash over this, and it's crazy, man. And and it's, I don't listen to it, but it's just frustrating to see like people sending you DMs and stuff about like, stop it with your soy boy soft rhetoric. Oh, they actually they wouldn't they wouldn't use a word like rhetoric, but you know, it's just they're like, I I can't believe you're telling Dana that he has to punish these people. <laughs> for saying things i'm like when did i say he has to punish him for stuff dude it's so weird how people see what my job is as a reporter and yeah. they think i'm trying to push some agenda or whatever but it has made me think a little bit because i'll be honest with you at the weigh-ins i didn't catch him saying the word terrorist and, and obviously it wasn't basharat that said terrorist it was Oren Kalan. um yeah I, I was not i didn't i didn't hear it um and it wasn't until nobody I got, caught it no, i didn't catch it none of us did and I guarantee his team didn't get it. I think they were recording it for their own sake, but I think that they probably heard him say it after the fact. And then went back and I mean, saw I had, it. I had, yeah, I mean, granted, I didn't have my ears in at the time, my headphones, um, but just listening in the room when I was standing right there behind my camera, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. At either. all. And even when I had to go, when, you, uh, when we saw that somebody mentioned it, I went back to the footage and boosted the audio, and then I read his lips, and I was like, oh, yeah, sure, clear as day. He said it, you know. But I guarantee he probably went back in the back and said, this motherfucker called me this, yeah. you know, and, and then they happen to have the footage because they everybody, every team tapes, you know, their fighter course, up there and then moment. they just took it moment, and they right? posted it, yeah. you know. So, yeah, I mean, but I mean, to not ask about it would just be ridiculous because then you're going to get people on the other side. They're like, dude, you're not being a journalist if you don't ask what he thought about this, you know, I mean, like. We can't brush everything under the the you know just brush everything under the rug just because yes these people get half naked and beat the shit out of each other and it's a fighting sport, it's still a sport that's being watched by people. I mean, 
this is not a fight that happens in the backyard and nobody else is around. Nobody's seen it. So nobody has to know. Nobody has to say anything about it. And you know what happens? Bros, bros honor, man. I beat your ass and nobody has to know. But if I'm standing there and it's being streamed and it could be watched by thousands and then later by millions and somebody calls me out and acts like a dumbass, how do you not talk about yeah. it? How do you not talk about it? That's not being politically correct. That's not being whatever. That's just being thorough. You know, that's just doing, you know, what it is. I mean, it'd be one thing if if I, as a videographer, was like, uh, I it, like I don't feel it would be on me to say I really need to get involved myself. My job is to take pictures you just, you and edit the thing and then put it out. I documented it. There it is. I documented it and it's good. A reporter's job is to find out the story that's within those images, within that story. So part of the story is an Israeli guy calling the Afghanistan guy a terrorist, and there's there's deep seated, you know, feelings between those peoples that I wasn't even fully aware of what the full breadth of the the, the stuff is. I wasn't that's a either. speaking that's a speaking moment. That's a, it's a learning uh, moment for those of us that don't. And if we don't learn something, if we don't ask the questions about what's happening. What are we doing? Yeah, we just skating through life, and we're just. Oh no no I don't want to I don't want to pay attention to that because you know it, it doesn't involve me in my little whatever so I'm just not going to whatever you know that stuff means something to somebody else yeah. and you being present that's on you to get that sound for those people it might not mean anything for these people that are like why how dare you ask this but the person the other person that's paying attention that's like this does mean something to me. I want you to ask Absolutely. this question. Well, you're so. spot on there, and I appreciate your explanation. And, and I didn't really intend to go down that route, but I thank you for doing it because you're explaining it and not making me explain it. And it's so true. I mean, you get it. It's just my job, and I'm just doing my job. And it's annoying to have people reach out to you you know, via direct messages. Yeah. And I don't want to be one of those guys that closes my direct messages and stuff. I like talking with fans, but to harass me and tell me you know, how shitty I am at my job and you know, what, you know, what, a, what a weak person I am because this is my agenda and stuff, it's frustrating if I'm being honest with you. But but I just delete it and move on. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I used to feel like I could try to talk to people and explain to them why I did what I did. And I'm now I realize that's pointless. Like you're never going to get somebody to be like, oh, you, <laughs> Do you know speak what? troll? Yeah. You speak troll? Exactly. So, no, I just move on, you know, and, and move on. But here is my question, right? And, and obviously I asked the question for Dana. Uh, because I, do, I look, I do find the terrorist remark inappropriate, especially given what we know yep. about the relationship now. That again, as you said, I wasn't aware of the issues between Afghanistan and Israel and that sort of thing, but I am now. But so I found it a little. I, I found I found the contact the, the, a little bit offensive or whatever. And I don't consider myself yep. a PC person. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I was like, it was offensive. It's probably inappropriate. You know what I mean? So. But, it was. But I do wonder, like, where the line is. And, you know, Dana keeps saying, like, look, man, we can't do anything or we're not going to do anything. And, I mean, there is something to be said. I mean, what he says is true. Like, hey, man, if they don't like each other, they don't get to go punch each other in the face the next night. And there's something to be said for that. But I do feel like there is a line that, that has to – that they, yeah. they got to talk about. I mean, you know what's funny is I heard a lot of people say – what if the Ad Afghanistan had made some like Jewish remark? Like, wouldn't people have been more up in arms? And I was like, right, you know, they probably would have been, you know. And if you start talking about, you know, then you start getting into like white and black and all these things. And again, I don't look. I at get some it. point there's got to be a line. I at think some so. Point, there's right? got to be something. I, it's because it's still you, these these guys are still representing your brand. You know, the guy that goes out there and says, you know. Fuck you! I hate you. I'm gonna rape your wife after I beat after I beat your ass. Don't want to hear that. Is that Definitely okay? Not, that shouldn't be okay. Is that okay, Dana? You know, it's like it's not okay. At some point, you gotta. Yes, it is guys fighting, but it doesn't mean you can't still have limits on what you you can you, they can do. I mean, you're telling them to not take performance enhancing drugs. You're telling them to, you know, make a certain weight. Can you also just tell them, hey, be like not a dick <laughs> and say like two super super like crazy shit you know well and, i mean and, i get it i get it like it was it's him calling it'd be like calling him a fat ass you know in, in some in some areas some people that's the same thing like oh you want to call me a name oh you know i'm i'm rubber you're glue what bounces off me sticks to you it's not a big <laughs> deal but at some point when you talk about certain things some things just should seem or feel taboo and i mean if that if you have two people where the whole thing where he's just trying to talk track but trash is just literally about a person's ethnicity and where he's from and knowing that there's actual like real issues going on at some point just as a person you got to be like dude that that was lame and as an organization and as a president if you say it's fine and okay they're going to keep thinking it's fine and okay but if you say man that's kind of a dick move kid uh don't say that sort of stuff 
others are going to listen right? to that. And that's all you have to do. I'm not that's saying, all you have to do is like. I'm not saying you got to find the guy. I'm not saying you got to cancel have to the guy's him. fight. Don't you have know? to schedule. Yeah, you don't have to cancel but the yeah, fight. Can't you just say, listen, we want to make it clear that we don't stand for that. You know what I mean? Because it's like, dude, like yeah. racism is still like really a problem in this world. You know what I mean? I know that that's yeah. not racism, but it's a bigotry that's kind of like that. Because as you said, it's saying because you're from Afghanistan, you're automatically a terrorist. I mean, that's that's come right. on, man. That you're talking about somebody's ethnicity yeah. at that point. You know, if you're talking about the color of their skin, where they come from, what it's th- to me, that's the line, man. And it's like, again, are, are, look, are we going to be able to stop racism in our generation? Like, no, probably not. You know what I mean? It's been it's no. been here for as long. And it, but but can we make a positive impact? Like I was saying, you know. Even in stuff like, you know, you watch like a soccer game, and like an international soccer game, and it, there's a big thing that says stop racism on the field. Like, now is that actually stopping racism? No, but at least it's speaking out. It's something. It's just yeah. something to say like, it's hey, It's taking man, a stand. This isn't It's okay. taking a stand. Yep. You're putting a flag in the ground. You're saying this is what I think, whether or not it's going to change somebody's mind. But you're at least, you're at least taking a stand. You're, you're not sitting on the fence saying – Eh, there's yeah. nothing I can do or say like, about it. Hey, bro. There actually is something you can say right. or do about what it. Did, you can give us, you can tell us what you actually think. Well, you think about it. I mean, really. And again, obviously, you know, Dana, the influence that he has in the sport, wouldn't it mean something if he if he'd have just said, look, we're not going to impose any sanctions or anything like that, but I would like to say that, look, that's not cool, man. That, like, let's yeah. let's leave that. So- just that. Just that would yeah. be a step. You know what I mean? Like, People I think would be like, whoa. Yeah. Whoa. And, and it would That's... probably have some influence because these fighters don't want to piss off Dana White. You know what I mean? Yeah. They understand that he's a very powerful figure in the sport. I think even that would be beneficial. Just say, hey, it's not cool, guys. Yeah. Let's knock that shit off. You know? So, yeah. um, I don't know. I, same thing we see in everything. The same thing when, we, when we've when seen, like, domestic violence, when we've seen other stuff. You know, you just – you would like to hear a message that just comes out – on one side of the fence, you know, and just say something. Not that you need to, you know, go too deep into it, but just, you know, if it's if it's making the rounds and, and it's making social media, I mean, they're so in tune to the stuff that people are talking about. It's just surprising that they don't get out ahead of some of this stuff yeah. and just say something, even that one thing. Do they think it's going to change anything? No. Uh, I mean, in the sense, I mean, it is. It boils down, it's still a violent, brutal sport, but that doesn't mean you can't, you know, have some sort of, you know, just... I don't know what the word is. Just, just being like compassion, not compassion, but just you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just crazy. Cause yeah, you you wish that they would at least just say something. Cause then you could be like, okay, I can't hold that against them because they've actually said that. Hey, that's not cool. Yep. I mean, they're they're still letting the fighter fight, and people are gonna hate and say, oh, I can't believe you're letting this guy fight. Whatever. But at least you're 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 coming down the side that you made a decision to say something about it, that you said, hey. By the way, there's nothing we can do to change that this guy thinks this guy is this. But I will at least tell everybody else watching this that this is not cool. I'm not really into it. Um, and, and yeah, they're going to settle it in, in the cage. Even that, man. <laughs> I would love to see that. You know, this is such a global sport. Yeah. And it, it's so, dude, I love the fact that, like, on any given night, you see so many different flags brought into the octagon of people. You know I mean? This really yeah. is a global sport, so let's – preach that global message too you know what i mean at least have one little bit of it that hey look man we're all in this thing together at the end of the day man it's it doesn't matter where you're from you know what i mean we get in there and we prove yeah. who the best of the best is and i don't know man i i, I just like you said I, i'm not saying you got to fire the guy i'm not saying just just address it and, and, and say it's wrong hey one other thing from That's uh it. contender series I'll listen say, to us we sound like a bunch of soy boys <laughs> just a couple soy boys everybody i'm going back and hug my palm tree everybody <laughs> in my dms was right i'm just a soy boy pushing my agenda or whatever <laughs> Man, jackasses. Uh, I, I did want to say one thing about uh, the last thing about Contender Series. Uh, Manuel Torres. You know, there was the the uh, the, the um, Miguel Torres. Uh, no, no, Manuel Torres, not Miguel Torres. Uh, but there was the the, Are you sure? the question. I'm pretty sure they, they. I'm pretty sure they called him Miguel Torres a couple. Did times. Did they really? Are you sure it wasn't Miguel? Bro- sure? Oh, you didn't. You didn't know no, that. Oh no, no, because I'm yeah, watching yeah, yeah, Cage yeah, so I couldn't hear it. I was wondering. They I'm like, like Frody and slipped a couple times. Uh, it, like Bisping called him Miguel Torres. Oh, that's funny. Twice, I'm like, bro- I think somebody else did. I'm like, bro, we. <laughs> just sat here and talked about the fact that you don't have to lump people together because of where they're from or whatever. I thought you were making some kind of like racist joke over there. Like, man, well, Look Miguel. Everybody's all- motherfucking Miguel Torres, man. They're all the same. They're all the same. He looked just like him. That's funny. I miss- No, but yeah, he called, he called him Miguel Torres a couple times. That's and he was hilarious. like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I was like, and maybe, which is funny because after, uh, I love, Miguel Torres is one of the first guys, and I know I'm just hijacking your thread. Uh <laughs> WC, but like Miguel Torres was one of the first cats that I was just like, I love this dude's fighting oh, yeah. style. When the first time I worked an event that when he was with the UFC, not that I ever like fanboy out, but I was like, dude, it's Miguel Torres. 
and that was that was about it. But I was like, I was like, it was pretty cool, you know. And then his day ended. <laughs> well, that. <laughs> but was, I was like, dude, Miguel Torres. That was definitely <laughs> worth hijacking the direction that I was going yes, in with everything. There it <laughs> is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you remember that one time that I was like, yo, that was awesome. <laughs> You literally And thanks for listening. You literally just had a Chris Farley skit there, man. That's <laughs> hey, that's where I get my humor from. Oh, that's I, great. I just I just I just fashion myself after him. Oh, that's great. Uh <laughs> listen, uh Manuel Torres, I was Now I'm gonna go do some blue in the blow in the bathroom. I'll be right back. <laughs> How are we more off the rails where we're not even with each other? Um, I know. I all right, know. maybe it's because I'm not there to like keep you in check. Maybe that's the that's problem. It. You, you can't give me that look. I can I can turn away from the screen and you're not and you're not looking at me. <laughs> you don't get my nonverbal cues to settle the fuck down, cold coffee. Uh, all right, Manuel Torres. It doesn't even matter anymore. It doesn't even. Matter. I know. Listen, I was like, I was like, oh, that's right. You were talking about Manuel Torres. Herb Dean told me that he did see the hand go over the eye, but that it wasn't with the fingers forward and that it was the base of the glove. But it made me think a little bit, like. Like, so he said, he's like, I did see the hand go in the eye, but it was not the fingers. So it's not illegal. And I was like, you know what? He's right. Because you can put, like, you can put your hand on people's mouths. You can put, I mean, you can put, obviously, oh, yeah. you, you can't take, you can't make a rule where hands can't go on faces. Because obviously, as you're grappling and stuff, that's going to happen. Yep, yep, yep. But it did make me think, I mean, what if it was like the, you know, obviously those gloves are open and there's like a seam at the Yeah, it was the bottom the part of the glove is what caught him. Yeah. It was the bottom part. You could, in the broadcast, you could see it really easily that his fingers were up. I mean, that's why when he, afterwards, he was like, no, 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 the fingers were up. Because when I was watching, I was like, clearly his fingers were up. And I just assumed it was that bottom part of the glove where it's open for the immediate palm part and then where the bottom sort of wraps. Right. That's the part that sort of caught him yeah. or whatever. But his fingers were clearly straight up in the air. I mean, that was probably one of the best examples of, like, them saying, like, put your finger, you know, fingers up or, like, closed fists. So what do you Granted, think? they would the, rather you do a closed fist. But. So, so, yeah, exactly. The closed fist would fix that. But obviously, I'm gonna, so that's why I wanted to ask you. So is that just, like, a freak occurrence that we don't need to worry about? Or is that something that should be looked at in the rules that, like, because obviously the guy lost. I mean, the, well, I don't want to say the guy lost the fight because that. Because obviously Manuel Torres was, was going to lose anyway. Yeah, he was lighting him up pretty good. But I mean, yeah. the way he reacted, like I don't think he was faking it. Like he really did no. get hit in his eye. So he, he he thought it. He thought he did. And he and and from his view, v- viewpoint, he probably saw the fingers and assumed it was. But we've seen guys with closed fists take a shot and think it was fingers True. just the way that the glove is caught him and that's just a different part of the glove that caught it wasn't even that bottom part it was just the edge of the the the, of the fist where it wrapped around a knuckle stood out or you know stuck out and we've seen heavyweights take it in the eye and be like oh he poked me in my eye and they're like no no he really really yeah. didn't i think it was just a freak occurrence and but i think it was probably mixed in the fact too that the way because it was almost like it was almost like it was like a palm strike <laughs> into his eye and yeah. then that part of the glove like got him or whatever um, and then maybe that mixed in with the fact of, I mean, I don't want to question his heart, but mixed in the fact that a little bit the fight wasn't going his way and if there was a possibility that he can maybe get even just a little leeway or something. But um, it was it was, it was was clean, and uh, it was right for him to not stop it. But unfortunately, you know, you got to keep defending yourself. And the fact that he went down and he went all in on my eye really hurts, and yeah. then he just got swarmed, and then it was done. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I thought Torres – um, explained it well afterwards, and from what I could see when it, when it happened, I w- I was like, yeah, I mean, I I couldn't see anything wrong about anything, and I I mean, I think it was just a freak occurrence and just maybe the way that the strike hit, um, but it looked like the same strike that we've seen two, a million times it, before. It did. It just made me think you if know? maybe there was a need to add a rule where like. Because, you know, you can cover the mouth, but you can't stick your hand in there or whatever. And obviously he didn't stick yeah. his hand in the eye or whatever. I don't know. It just it made me wonder if, like, maybe there needs to be a rule that addresses, you know, if the hand hits the eye in any way. But you, you, I, it, what I didn't think See, about some- was the, 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 the point that you made that sometimes fists go in there too. Then what are you going to say? Right. Like, uh, so is that right. not okay? Like, well, what do you mean? You know what I mean? So What gets me is when they're on the ground and you have a top position and say their heads are really close and then they're trying to do a little head separation and you'll see them put their hands on their faces right. as they're trying to separate and peel. And you'll see the, the fingers resting right on the eyes. And that's always when the, you'll see the judge, uh, the refs go in there to just to make sure that they're not actually putting the eye or gouging the eye. Mm-hmm. That worries me more than anything with like, the eye pokes when they're standing when the guy can see it coming because when uh i i feel like when they're on the ground and they're allowing them to 
really sort of just work the fingers around the face as they're trying to control the head, there's a much bigger chance for them to do some serious gouging and damage right there when you're on top. So that even happened in uh, watching the PFL one. That, and it, uh, that might have been that uh, D'Elia fight in the uh, – the Capaloza fight because I think there was a couple times on that one I was like, oh no, please! I was like, please don't do something dirty. Please yeah, don't yeah. do something dirty. Um, but no, I mean, as for like this and with like the the finger strikes and whatever, I mean, I think it's just gonna be one of those things. As as long as there's open fingered gloves, there's always gonna be something to where somebody at some point's gonna you know, uh, even if it's close, if people are gonna use that or I mean to say that something's up and and, and at times it, it is going to happen it's unfortunate i think it's just part of training people need to, to get that muscle memory of training where you're not leaving the hands out extended um because i think if they did close the gloves i mean people are just going to be like hey now you're 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 making to where i can't grapple like i want to i can't manipulate i can't do my jujitsu or whatever like i want you know somebody's not going to be happy that way um, you know, maybe there can be some improvements, but you know, I think it's the best of what it is, but I think it was just a fluke sort of thing. Um, at least in this one, because I, I remember as I watched it, I was like, wow, good on this kid to keep his fingers completely straight up there. Right. It was, it was a perfect example of what I would think. Like, it's like, okay, if you're going to keep your hand open, there was no forward part on it. And I was just like, good on him. So um, I think you're right. I, I just, the night of, I, I kind of thought to myself, I wonder if something needs to change. But I, I think you made some good points there. So listen, let me uh, apologize to, to everybody that I briefly lost control of things. I didn't know which direction it was going in. <laughs> but you know how I rectify that? You know how I figure out which direction oh. we need to go in moving forward when I've lost complete control? You know how I fix that cold coffee? Roadmap, 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 roadmap. <laughs> Look at a seamless transition like a couple professionals. <laughs> right. I knew where you were going and I ain't even in the same room. Oh, Look at that. I love it. Just I love that. it. It was like it was like we had the, the, the things just laid out for us. Well, each and every week for the past two weeks, we've turned over the questions. <laughs> We we like our our, our supporters over at patreon.com slash the MMA Roadshow. As we That's always say, funny. if you love this show, if you love listening to it, you want to help support us, go on over to patreon.com slash the MMA Roadshow. You can sign up there for as little as $3 a month to help support the show. You'll get exclusive access to the and a half episodes that we do each and every week. There's a USC event. Uh, I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to do this one yet. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll do an and a half episode from CFFC 102 since I can't actually work it. Maybe I'll Whoa. record a podcast from the audience. I don't know. We'll figure something out. But uh, but we'll do it each and every week. But we also turn over what we like to call the roadmap, where we say, hey, who's got questions? What do you want to hear us talk about? What do you want addressed? And because you're supporting us, we have no choice but to address exactly what you want to address. So cold coffee, <laughs> let's get things kicked off this week. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's take uh, the man from the top of the list here, Scott McCrate, who's also uh, – if there are attendance points, uh, I see all you guys on the weigh-ins, but Scott, uh, recently, he's always funny because he hops on and he's always, he's like, where's JM at? And I'm like, what about me, yo? yo what about me? <laughs> I mean, you too. You too. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Scott. Uh, so uh, here's Scott's question. But no, I love it that everybody shows up. So everybody gets a gold star if you show up for the weigh-ins and you say hey as well. Scott says, can you talk about the history of the Friday Live weigh-ins from the early days? and how it is now such a popular event that we all tune in for. <laughs> well, I don't know that everybody tunes in, but yeah, the hardcores do. Yeah. And as you said, Scott <laughs> gets die hard. Scott is a Scott is a diehard man, and we really appreciate uh, his support uh, as of late, especially. But um, no, listen, man. You know it's funny. You know him, him bringing this up. I was thinking about it earlier as I was reading the question. Man, we're we're five years in on this now, right? I mean, we're talking about back to 2016 when I think these changes were made. Um, Something like that. It's crazy, man. You know, it's 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 basically just the thing now. For a, a lot of people, I'll give you a little history of it. One of the reasons that we do the MMA Roadshow every single Thursday night is because used to fight week on Fridays we didn't have anything to do till like two in the afternoon. Like the, the weigh-ins yep. were at you know we had to show up for like a two p.m. check-in and there'd be like a three p.m. Q and A and then like the fighters would be on the scale at four p.m. So Thursday nights. Once your press conference was done, yeah, that's, it. that's it. Once your press <laughs> conference was done, once your media day was done, 
uh, you know, we there's nothing. Yeah, at that point, you know, you can sleep in the next day. So we would just, as you said, we just get fucked up and we just start drinking beer and talking about MMA. Yep. And it was a good time to do it. Now, I will say, uh, the Friday morning early weigh-ins have put a real damper in how we <laughs> how we handle things on Thursday night. Uh, I'm not going to say that I necessarily drink less, which I probably should, but it's just made the way I feel on Friday mornings a little rougher. Uh, and over the years, I have contemplated moving the podcast to a more suitable time to allow for more uh, alcohol consumption without feeling like crap at the early morning weigh-ins, uh, but I've left them where they are. But that's the background on it. Uh, you know what's funny is the first one, UFC 199, I believe, was the first UFC event that did it in Inglewood, California. The California State Athletic Commission, they were, they were really – one of the ones that were kind of the driving force behind, you know, giving people more time to, to rehydrate. And it does make sense when you really talk about the logic of it, other than the fact that it screws up the recording schedule for the MMA Roadshow. Uh, Shame on that, them. You know, Shame. I don't, remember, I don't remember them talking to us about that either. I just want to know. We, yeah, Andy, they did not clear that. I see you, Andy Foster. <laughs> I see you, and I'm still holding the grudge, man. You, you messed up my Thursday night drinking. But, uh, no, it, you know, it allows the fighters more time to rehydrate, which makes all the sense in the world, especially, you know, the studies that we talked about at the time where, uh, you know, the fact that uh, the brain is one of the last areas that does fully rehydrate, and obviously the, l- yeah. the less water that's around there, the more damage it is. So there's a lot of logic and sense into it. Um, in the beginning, in fact, we actually, I want to say we missed the UFC 200 weigh-ins, um, because they were telling us that, in, in fact, I know we did. They were telling us that no media was allowed, and then a couple right. of media people got in, um, and and so that was weird. So a couple media people. Now, if you remember, that was the one where Misha Tate, I think, came in at like the last second. So there was all this drama, and you know, there was only a handful of of, of people that were able to video it because we were told media couldn't even go, so we didn't go. In fact. I remember uh, the first fight night after UFC 200 was in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, um, and I showed up to the to the early morning weigh-ins, and uh, they sent me out. They were like, it was Chris Costello. He's like, bro, I hate to do this to you. He's like, but we're not like you can't be in here. I was like, can I just tape it and hold the like hold the stuff for later? And he was like. Nah, man. He was very apologetic, very nice. He's a, a mm-hmm. PR pro, but he, he actually was like, no, like media is not allowed in here. So in the very early days, it was uh, kind of a weird thing. They didn't allow media in, and and uh, we weren't supposed to know the results of the weigh-ins until the afternoon, which was bizarre. So it was kind yeah. of a weird start. I, I'm kind of used to it at this point. Um, you know, it's funny. Now I kind of hate the ceremonial weigh-ins just because we have to, like, pack up and then move and go uh, uh, do it again. Until yeah. until they start, I always hey, I'm like, oh my god, like we just finished weigh-ins, now we got to go and reset up and go redo everything. But then we get there and they've got the big stage set up and the music's playing and the crowds in there, and then I love it. Um, there's nothing like those those because those face-offs when they do those face-offs in the apex and there's no music playing and there's no crowd and there's no and then they're just like. But, you know, just staring at each other. Yeah. Uh, that, by the way, that worked a lot better on video than it did in, in audio form. Uh, <laughs> I made my I made my face off pose made there. The yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I I don't know. It's it's. Uh, I I love the face offs in front of the fans, and, and except, I just wish it was all together at the same time. But it, it is funny how popular it's gotten. And, it, and you know what? I wish I honestly. Yeah. I love it, and we've just started reason for anybody that doesn't know. I'm sure most people listen here, but but now, uh, Cold Coffee had the idea of throwing a, throwing a mic in there, and I sit there and I, I try to chat as much as I can. Now, unfortunately, um, I'm also shooting photos and updating the website and blah 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 blah, so I don't get to chat as much as I would like to. But um, but those are fun times to just sit there and kind of kind of shoot the shit with people, you know. There you go. There you go. I hope that answered your question, Scott. Yeah. Did you have anything to add, Cold Coffee? I know I was just kind of rambling well, about it. The only it. thing, well, no, it was good. I mean, the only thing, I, and, and and we chat about this a little bit earlier because we talked a little bit about this question. When I think about the early weigh-ins, and from what I remember, you know, granted this goes this goes way back, is that uh, I believe the first early weigh-ins that we intended were actually Bellator weigh-ins. That Bellator was doing this before the UFC Maybe was doing right. it. And then, uh, and we'd have to go back and look at the thing, but I feel like we went to the Bellator ones before we ever went to UFC one, and then the UFC started doing it afterwards. And I'd have to go back and look and see if we'd have to try to find it, but that means like work, trying to like search up <laughs> shit and, and do whatever. But I bet if we would, uh, if this, if the UFC 199 was a, is the one before it, I bet we could probably see if we could find footage of something that happened before. But I can't remember how Bellator, how they were doing it as well, but 
Bellator has been doing early weigh-ins for quite some time, and I want to say that they were doing it first. Um, so if that is true, which I believe that it is, that is one thing that uh, if there was ever anything that uh, people always say, oh, Bellator could pick this up from the UFC and they would be better. This is something that, unless I'm wrong, which can be true, this is something that Bellator was doing that the UFC decided to do that now that we were like, this is awesome. Because, yeah. I mean, except for the early part where we have to get up early and miss drinking the night before and uh, – <laughs> All that other good stuff. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, early early weigh-ins are fun. I mean, and, and even lately, I've had a really, I've had a good time enjoying. I love the seating thing. Even now, even though I kind of get, I always get shit on because people are like, oh, I don't like the angle um, because they want me to be more centered for the face-offs. But being in the position that I get, I get that great shot of being sort of looking through the curtain, which has kind of become my thing of pointing the camera over there and seeing right. some of the behind the scenes stuff that we normally would never see if it was just like in a straight ahead uh, ceremonial setting or something along those side, along those lines. Um, so I kind of dig it. I've, I've kind of enjoyed uh, some of the other stuff and, and getting kind of the banter around with some of the other people there and getting that behind the scenes sort of feel. Um, it's kind of fun. So And, and let me just say, it. for everybody that loves that great behind the scenes look, don't look for it at UFC 268 because I will be shooting weigh-ins <laughs> there, and uh, I do not have the quality tripod and all the uh, materials that my man uh, Cole Coffee does. Lockdown so shot. You will be getting the lockdown shot of the scale, and I will uh, do my best <laughs> to chat. In fact, it'll probably be Mike Bond chatting. I'll probably uh, set him up with the microphone because I'll be editing video. So there you go. Well, there you go. Little preview. Little preview. I think that would give that that. I mean, it does add it does add a little something getting the the audio, even if it can't be everything. You know. Um, I don't know if he's going to be doing photos. He might even get a chance to chat even more yeah. than what you would normally get. I just so, uh, I just ordered an extra XLR cord, actually, so I'll have that ready to go for next week. There you go. Boom. Gear talk. Gear talk. <laughs> Gear talk. Gear <laughs> talk. That's the new segment that's going to follow after the weather. Oh. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, let's for. go. We'll go. <laughs> Uh, I guess we'll just go down the line. We'll go to Enrique, who has Ortiz, who has two questions. All right. That's getting your money's worth right there. Um, if Islam can beat Dan Hooker this weekend, would he fight for the title next, regardless of the winner between Olivier, Oliveira sorry, and Poye? Okay. Uh, good question. Good question. Now, I think the real uh – you know, when you say regardless of the winner is I think you got to talk about regardless of the winner of Michael Chandler, Justin Gaethje, right? I mean, that's just seven days later, um, and they're certainly going to factor greatly in there. But I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb, and I'm going to just say yes. Because, uh, you know, I, I, listen, I, I think – look, let's be honest. The winner of Michael Chandler, Justin Gaethje, is probably coming out of there a little bit banged up, right? I mean, I, I don't think we're yep. expecting anybody to come out of there scot-free, you know, throw one punch and they're done. So they're probably going to be sitting around a little bit. Now, listen, the the, 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 the lightweight title fight's not till December anyway, so maybe it wouldn't be something that would get in the way. But when I think about um, Islam Akashev and where he stands, right, and you, you think about the fact that, look – He's Khabib's boy, right? We know he's Habib Nurmagomedov's yep. guy, uh, so that he's got that behind him. Look, we know you hear it, right? Dana is going to be dropping bombs next week. He says, you know, listen, he's going to be doing big things over in Abu Dhabi. You know, he touched on it earlier at the Continental Series. I mean, he's been saying it for a while. Like we're doing huge things over there. Um, we got big things coming on. So, listen, um, based on you know the influence that the the Abu Dhabi area has and their relationship with the company, and the relationship with Habib Nurmagomedov here as well. I'm going to say that if Islam Akhajev, uh goes in there and wins, unless it's just a terrible fight, and I don't see how it could be a terrible fight with Dan Hooker involved in it, you know what I mean? So unless it's a terrible fight, um, I'm going to say absolutely yes, he has the inside track, and he's fighting for the title next. Uh, I, I, I mean, and I'm not trying to write, you know, uh, I'm not trying to write the other fight out. I mean, obviously Chandler Gage is going to be an incredible fight, man. I don't see anybody that looks at that one on paper and says, you know, it's not going to be a good fight. It should be fun. And somebody's going to be able to make a statement. And Justin Gaethje can go in there and make a statement. But I think Islam's got kind of the inside track. So unless it's unless it's just an absolute snoozer, then I'm saying, yes, he fights for the title next. There you go. I'm going to say no. <laughs> and, all right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the second part of Enrique's question is when will UFC put on a show at Allegiant Stadium? 
They have sold out every pay-per-view this year. Wouldn't a move into the big stadium equal more revenue? Definitely would. I mean, it would come with more costs as well. Obviously, anytime you put on a, a big show in a stadium, man, you got to build it out a little bit. You know, I think even over the, over the years, all the stadium shows that we've done, I mean, even Dana has come out and admitted, you know, that sometimes the viewing experience isn't exactly like you might want it to be. I mean, those big shows yeah. down in Melbourne, for instance, um, you know, yeah. there's people that have, hard to see. It's hard to see, <laughs> and there's people that it's just too big. Yeah, it's, it's just too big. It's too big, and there's something to be said for um, the experience. You know, when you're when you're doing a stadium yeah. show, it's about the atmosphere, right? It's about just all, yeah. you know all of us being in there together, and you know this is amazing. You know, we're all experiencing this moment together. I mean, you know, you think about Holly Holm knocking out Ronda Rousey, and just the, the buzz that everybody was like, oh, the walkout my was super. God. The walkout was super impressive. It was very memorable, yeah. but. Then it was like, wow, look how tiny they are as they're walking through. Yep. Like they look really tiny for where I'm sitting. And, you know? and, and, and I, if you don't have the right screens, it's it's practically you can't see anything. And, and they would have to bring in a lot of screens at Allegiant Stadium, which I, I you know I haven't gone to a yep. game there yet. I've, I've I've taken a tour of it with my son. It's a beautiful facility, but you know it, it's interesting, right? Because like Dallas Cowboy Stadium, AT and T Stadium, I believe it's called, uh, unless they change the name. Um, you know, it's better suited. Be, because of that massive screen, right? The thing that the makes screen. it famous. That screen. It's super impressive. Unless you've ever been in there and seen how big it is, like you just don't comprehend it. Like you're sitting in a stadium and it's scaled to the size that it feels like you're sitting in your living room watching TV. Now, the the problem is that stadium is massive. Like it's really big. Allegiant Stadium is smaller, so like it wouldn't be as hard to fill and it wouldn't feel, or feel as gargantuous. But it doesn't have that big screen there as well. So, listen, there's yep. some logistical challenges and, and, and some things. But you, you know, you know that they want to go to that stadium. I'll never forget. Uh, I had a meeting one time uh, with Lawrence Epstein uh, at the UFC headquarters, and uh, the headquarters is was, was still pretty new. You know, the, the new campus was pretty new, and we were we were meeting to talk about. You know, I can't remember what the interview was about. You know, some initiative they were doing or whatever. And I came to interview him in his office. And I laughed because Lawrence Epstein is a very powerful man in, in the UFC. And I laughed because uh, when I was kind of just, you know, busting his balls a little bit, uh, his office is on the back side of the UFC headquarters, right? So the headquarters is up against 215, which is a highway in Las Vegas that goes east to west. And, it, you know, the, the out front you got the beautiful trees. That's where you see the billboard. That's where you see the, the courtyard area, you know, and that, that faces the front. And Lawrence's office faces the back. And so when I went in there to meet him, to talk to him, I was just kind of busting his balls, you know, because obviously he has this incredibly nice office in this incredibly nice building. I'm like, Lawrence, I'm like, this is the best office you could get, man? Like, facing the back over here? Like, you couldn't even get anything up front? And he looks outside out his window. He goes, well, that's where the stadium's going to be. And I'm like, stadium are you talking about? Like, wh what stadium? And he was talking about Allegiant Stadium like years before anybody knew because he was like part of, which I found out later, like he was part of like the planning committee to like get, you know, so he wanted his office to face where the new stadium was going to be that hadn't even been approved to be built yet. You know what I mean? So, and the, and the UFC apex before the, ape, or the, uh, yeah, the apex before the apex was ever the apex. And then when they build the hotel, he's going to have the best view. He's going to have it all, <laughs> man. So, so listen, what I'm saying is they, they view, you know, they value that property. Obviously Dane actually bought uh, a suite there. So he has a suite there. Um, they, they want to go there, but you always hear what Dana says and he's damn right. Like you, you got to go there with the right fight, man. Like you go in there and you get a half filled building. Oh, that's, that don't look good for you. And when you do it, you got to spend money to do it right because you got to make that viewing experience as good as you possibly can because it's tough, you know what I mean? And that's why he always says it's the right fight, it's the right fight. And I just think they got to they got to wait for the right fight. And of course, I mean, <laughs> COVID. You got you got to get COVID gone, yeah. man. People need to be able to get here. So, it will happen. I guarantee you they will host an event at Allegiant Stadium. Remember too, the Allegiant is all cashless. So, imagine the UFC having an event there and then have the system go down like it did that first uh, UNLV game, yep. I think. The system went down so nobody could buy their beer and people were pissed <laughs> off. UFCB were a much different uh, viewing situation if everybody was stone sober in there. <laughs> like 
it's still going to be fun, but it's not going to be as fun. Can you imagine? <laughs> people were pissed off at a college football game. Can you football, imagine yeah. what an <laughs> MMA crowd? I mean, that's basically what you do at an MMA event, that's right? That's what you do. Like, you just you, go you get drink smashed. And you get smashed, <laughs> and then you watch people beat the shit out of each other. Uh, Everybody gets smashed. <laughs> oh, my God. It would be crazy. It would be crazy. But I look forward to it. I, fun, I, fun. I do look forward to, uh, to covering the show there. That stadium, like I said, I haven't been able to go to a game yet. Hopefully um, – I should have tried to. I guess the season probably won't go much longer. Like maybe to go like a UNLV game. Or I can't afford to go to a Raiders game, yeah. but maybe to go over there for a UNLV game uh, where you could get tickets just to check it out. Because I, when I toured it with me and my son. We toured it, and uh, it's a beautiful facility, man. I look, I look forward to covering the event there. All right, for the next one, Jay Gould. I almost Gold Gould. Gould. I would say that's Gould. Gould. Um, what do you guys think about the UFC signing of Alex Pajera? Uh, his debut is getting closer, and I feel like his joining the roster has flown a bit under the radar. I like this question a lot. I like this question a lot. And, and, this, is, this is good. Yeah, and I, and, and I like it because to me it's interesting, right? Uh, Alex Pajeda, if you don't know, is the guy that knocked out Israel Adesanya, the right? The guy that's, that beat Izzy. And that's that's like li- like literally like a couple of his of stories about him. Like that's literally – because we knew nobody would know the name Alex Pajeda. Like we literally yeah. just called him. He also him. beat Dustin, uh, Dustin Jacoby in an earlier fight. He did. And Dustin Jacoby is another guy that's a, a stud kickboxer as well but yeah I, I, when i looked back and i was like i was like look at that other name on the list as well so it's not just izzy he's he, this dude's been beating he, no no UFC he's caliber dude he's legit but it's funny like we literally just called him the guy who knocked out out of Sonya, like in the headline the guy, on the site it. which is pretty funny so um and, he, and so but, but but that's the interesting so this is why i think this is so interesting right i believe this has um echoes of clarissa shields to a degree right like i feel like the UFC has to make a decision, right? Do you bring this guy and you go, I mean, all in on this is the guy that knocked that on to sign you? You know, do you start doing yep. promos on him from the very beginning of like, you know, Israel out of sign you and there's like shadows chasing him in a hallway or so, you know what I mean? Like, do you, I mean, do you do you do that from the very beginning and risk that he comes in and and doesn't do what you thought he was going to do, and now you yeah. know you look foolish because you signed this guy. Or do you let him kind of come in and fly under the radar, and maybe he comes in and gets a big highlight reel finish, and then you go, oh, you like that finish? Well, how about the one where he knocked out Israel Adesanya? Bet you didn't know that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Before Jan Blockowitz yeah. <laughs> beat him, there was one other. Yeah. So Alex Pajera. So, <laughs> well, see, look at that. You got the promo already done, man. You've already got it fully produced and <laughs> promo ready to go. done. No, did it. I produced it while still in my undies. So done. UFC, send me a check. I'm 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 torn on this one, Coca. I'm interested to hear what you think as well, because like on the like on the one hand, I do feel like hold on, we're a week away from this man fighting at Madison Square Garden uh, on right. on you know a, a leading prelim into a big pay per view, and I do agree with what Jay's saying here. I feel like I haven't seen a damn word about it. You know what I mean? And it seems like an odd yeah. one. That said, I mean, the UFC is busy promoting an event in Abu Dhabi right now. They'll go full-on Madison yep. Square Garden mo- mode next yep. week. So maybe it'll come in. But it, but I do wonder if maybe it's a situation where they're taking a conscious decision to say, look, we're not going to hype yep. this guy as more than he is. It's not fair to him. It's not fair to – because, you know, it's the expectation. Like, look – Clarissa Shields, I mean, we were sitting here talking about, like, hey, is this whole thing over? Is it done? Let's blow it up. Let's never have her fight again. And maybe if Alex Pajera comes in here and loses to Andres Mikhailidis, maybe we're saying the same thing. I don't I don't know. So I, I feel like on the one hand it's kind of like this uh, promoter's paradox, right? Like you got to either decide yeah. we're going all in on this dude and we're and we're blowing him up as the dude that, you know, is, is Izzy's worst nightmare or – we let him matriculate a little bit. We let him do his thing. We don't put the pressure on him right away. We let him get comfortable here. Clearly, if that was a decision that was they discussed, we know which way they went here because I haven't seen anything from the UFC. I mean, I've seen, obviously, like blogs and websites and stuff, but I haven't seen the UFC do yep. anything, and I don't know if it's right or wrong. I mean, I, I'm with you. I think it definitely saves their butt in, in the sense where, you know, if they're touting this guy as being, you know, as the, as the possible Izzy killer uh, you know, they don't want to set that up and then have it fail. But also, too, I wonder if it partially is just the fact of maybe something's going on with like the whole Izzy thing that they're they're, they're keeping kid gloves. And the last thing they want to do is promote the dude that beat him, knowing that how do you promote him? You promote him as the guy that beat Izzy, right. you know. So I wonder if it's just uh, if it's partially a, a two part play. One, 
they're giving him a shot to go in there. And if he comes out and he's a stud and he's a badass, then they're like, okay, now we have something we have beat. We got footage. We can show that he, he's fought top caliber dudes in an MMA and he was able to do it. Then you can maybe start doing that thing. But part of me is just wondering if this was more of, let's just get him on the, let's get him in there. Let's see how he does. And, and, and almost like, don't 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 let it as he know that we're bringing him in. Don't 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 tell him. You think just, maybe he hasn't heard? You know, maybe he doesn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, they're like, we we need to get this 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 bout with Whitaker happening. We need to get UFC two seventy one taken care of. Can we can we just bring him in the back door? <laughs> Let's not really say anything about this and and then go from there. Um, I don't. I I feel more like it. It was a matter of they didn't want to. Uh, weirdly enough. Uh, upset Izzy and what they're trying to do with Izzy as opposed to uh, be unsure if this guy is going to uh, worry or not. Yeah. I mean, one, I don't think they have to worry about that dude. Uh, dude, uh, he's a fucking stud, yeah. man. Uh, this guy's going to come in and make uh, an immediate uh, impact. I feel, I mean, he's just one, his striking is literally next level. We say that about a couple guys and, and other guys before, this guy really is. He's scary. And if he's if he's done his due diligence on getting uh, his MMA overall um, skill set taken care of, he's going to be dangerous. He's going to be dangerous right from the get go. I just felt like to me, it just felt like uh, why what you know why go in here and promote the guy that beat one of your champions, um, knowing that it's just going to piss Izzy off. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Izzy uh, I would that. go off. I think he would go fucking haywire if they come in there and started trying to promote him. Well, and and, um, and does that really help you that you're you're put? That's a good it point. Doesn't. Too. You can't. You're shit. You're shitting on your champ. You're shitting on your own you know, champion, you, right? The only, the only the only way to promote him is shitting on your champ. That's a good point. I would say let's keep the let's keep the one guy happy. You know, like hey, who hey, cares the, about the new guy yeah, coming in? <laughs> this guy that we've been telling you is amazing. <laughs> you know, we didn't tell you he got knocked the fuck out. It's crazy. It's <laughs> crazy. And we got that guy too. You know what I mean? So and we got him we too. We got him too. Someday he might actually find him and get get to run that back. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't happen for time you know he's got to fight you know at least four or five more fights but trust me it could happen, well, it could happen. And, in the, and in the meantime just know that he got knocked out cold it was out it was bad. uh i will say this <laughs> if you like uh if you like kickboxers and, and uh obviously if you're tuned into alex pajeta you're gonna you're gonna know this name already but for any reason you don't cedric dumbe is making the transition over to mixed martial arts as well uh november 1st over in dubai is his debut um, by the way, he's already signed with Paradigm, so you know what a, what a high level management group that is, and the type of athletes they're signing. They're looking for people yeah. that, are, that are going to the. They're top. not just pulling pulling random people off. No, just saying, I, I have a I have a gut feeling about this kid. And listen, I have a gut feeling. Cedric Dumbe, um, from from what I understand, uh, did train off and on for several years at the MMA factory, um, and, and and is not training there now, um, but spent some time under Fernando Lopez. Um, and has been kind of quietly behind the scenes getting ready for this transition to MMA. Cedric Dumbe, if you want to see his highlight reel, man, uh, Google him. The dude is an absolute machine. Uh, actually, over at the, the uh, patreon.com slash the MMA Roadshow, I shared a, a promo of one of his glory fights. I thought he did an amazing promo uh, of one of his glory fights earlier this year, but that dude is an absolute monster. And uh, I don't think, uh, from what I understand, the UFC is definitely intrigued. But they didn't want to bring the guy in at 0 and 0 in MMA, which I completely understand. Even as highly uh, touted and as amazing he is at kickboxing, they wanted to see him get at least a couple of wins. But I gotta think, you know, his debut is is uh, November 1st in Dubai. I gotta think it's not gonna take more than a handful of wins at most to get him into the UFC. And this dude can crack, man. He is fun to watch fight. So uh, Cedric Dumbe. You said Cedric. Cedric Dumbe, you know, oddly enough, but totally not related, a circular djembe is a drum that is fun to hit on, and it makes a wonderful sound, and it's great around circles, uh, you know, drum circles, and uh, when you're smoking weed, I, circular djembe, a djembe, D-J-E-M-B-E, a djembe. I definitely <laughs> wish we were broadcasting this video right now so people could see the look on my face of just the general what in God's name, are you talking about <laughs> cold coffee? Well, you said Cedric Dumbe, and all I could think about was like Jim Bay. I was like, oh man, I used to have fucking great drum circles on some Jim Bays. Because you could either you could either be the the odd man out and you try to bring like a conga, and then you're like, oh, that's way too big, you know, just leave that. Or you can get the little bongos, then you look like a really silly hippie. But the cool kids all had the the nice Jim Bay drums, the nice big fat round ones, because they got a nice bass sound in the middle, but they also have nice little higher tones around the outside. 
That's that, and that's the drum talk that's going to take place after the gear talk, which is after the weather talk for the next episode. Uh, all MMA all the time. All MMA and more. Uh, amazing. Okay, and then I guess last one and the 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 funnest question I know you've been waiting for from one Mark Fellows who also gets a gold star Stud. for attending all the uh, Stud. the website stuff. Um, Mr. Morgan, Mr. Coffee, are you missing spending time at the office this week with the world nominated hot tea and that youngster apprentice Jose <laughs> from one of those similar website those smaller websites? Or are you content enjoying some R and R at home and avoiding those twelve dollar peronas? Oh man, I'll tell you what. Uh I, I'm uh Kind of glad that I'm not back at the office. I do have a little PTSD, I think, from all the time we spent in that bar in Abu Dhabi that we labeled as our office. They basically had one table in this bar, stills, if anybody was listening to the show back during the Fight Island times, that we spent a, a lot of time at um, as both welcome guests and unwelcome guests at times based <laughs> on our consumption levels. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, more unwelcome as the night went on. Yeah, no doubt about <laughs> it. And uh, and had a good time hanging out with Hot Tea and, uh, and uh, Jose, man. Uh, uh, we never really th- threw Jose on the microphone. <laughs> we always had fun hanging out. I always him. try. I always try when I'm around, but I was like, Morgan, no. Morgan always shuts it down. We're not he giving that smaller, tiny site any any views, man, <laughs> any any love. But no, we had, we had a good time. Uh, but I will say this: those prices, I do not miss those prices at all. I got a message from Oscar Willis from the Mac Life, the one and only Hot Tea. The first night he was there, he was like, dude, two beers. And an order of wings was seventy dollars. <laughs> oh my like, god! Oh god. I don't, do not miss Why that go? At all. Don't even. It's not even worth going. Brutal. That's crazy. Brutal. That's crazy. So yeah, listen. I. I, I, I uh, that's crazy. I listen. I, I, fight night. I'll miss the fact that I'm not there, man. I love. There's nothing better. I love to do on a Saturday than than cover a fight. But uh, but yeah, you know what, man? Not having to make that flight over there. Um, those guys, man. I feel for them. Next week in New York, man. They're gonna be. They're going to be hurting a little bit, man, because you do get some real jet lag from making that trip. So they're going to be hurting a little bit for 268. So kudos to them, much respect to them. Uh, and, but uh, you know what, man? I'm not, I'm not complaining about sitting one out. I don't want to sit too many of these things out, but uh, I'm not complaining yeah. about a little break and, and getting to come out here and hang with my my CFSC fan this week. So so it's good. So there you go. Shout out, Mark Bells. All right, well, listen, uh, we'll wrap up with just a little talk on UFC 267. I don't want to break down the full card. I know you're, 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 get, you're getting a lot of that already. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Coke Coffee's ready to go hit his Doom Bay or whatever. Uh, <laughs> Jim Bay. Jim Doom Bay's the fighter. What about Jim Salt Bay? What about Salt drum. Bay? Where does Salt Bay fit <laughs> in there? Yeah, where's Salt Bay at, homie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, you get some great. That's uh, funny. Fair Hanoon is uh, so like, as we mentioned at the top. Fair Hanoon is over there uh, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, she's not covering it directly for MMA Junkie this week. She's doing a little bit of side hustling stuff as well. Uh, but you can catch a lot of it. She's done a lot of great sit down interviews. So make sure you seek out her coverage. She's got a lot of stuff there. Uh, obviously, Oscar Willis is over there. Um, if you can find Jose Young's work, I'm not exactly sure where it publishes at. Um, but he promises me it's a reputable outlet. I, I haven't actually seen it for myself, but if you can find his stuff, he's over there also. Yeah, I, um, I happened to catch him on the UFC stream. I, I think that's the only way I was going to be able to find him this week. He was on the UFC okay, stream so you, earlier today. So you the can't presser, confirm so. that he was there. All right, I I, uh, I can confirm he was there. Okay, fair enough. Again, I'm, <laughs> I'm not. I mean, I don't know how the UFC chooses who gets credentialed. I'm not sure what vetting process they're using. I, I've never seen the guys work, but. <laughs> They're they're giving him a credential. He's there. It may be worth checking out. Uh, I just is is anything more? Uh, um, you know, I guess like you're that you're. Mo- I mean, this card is really damn good. Uh, I mean, the the the, the Blahovich to share two of the nicest dudes in the sport, man. Two guys yeah. that have shared the similar journey of ups and downs, and you you, you really their, don't. Their want- trash talk at the press conference was just epic. <laughs> Sure. I, I missed that while I was flying Psych. here. Yeah, was, lack of heard, lack of. I heard the press. There's con- no trash talk. I heard the press conference was a little dry. I mean, it's, you don't have. It was a, just. It was just very. It was just very plain Jane. There wasn't. I mean, there wasn't a lot of heat. There wasn't a lot. Of, I mean, if anything, uh, the leech and. Um, uh, Chimea, yeah. that was like probably the closest of anything, sort of having anything. But uh, no, it was very, it was, I mean, it was a good press conference. I mean, everybody got to, to say a little something. But yeah, I mean, in terms of it being like, oh man, that was really memorable, it wasn't one of the most memorable ones. But um, 
it was it was still fun to watch. But yeah, I joke. I mean, like Blockwitz and Tajera are like two of the nicest dudes ever. They're never going to talk shit about no. each other or whatever. So, but I am looking forward to that fight um, I'm, I, by far. Look, I'm, I'm looking forward to that fight. I'm looking forward to San Hagen Yan. I know nobody likes the bantamweight interim title and all that stuff. I get it, but it's still yeah, it's still it's a kind of fun, weird. One. It's a phenomenal fight. Uh, I, I I did pick Islam Makachev in that fight, but I respect the hell out of Dan Hooker for for taking the yeah. fight. Uh, I love Same that. Uh, but I will say this, man. The the, the one storyline, uh, you know, obviously anytime there's tiles involved, that's going to be the big ones. But um, I'm really interested to see Hamzat, man, because I I, I know a lot that's of the one. Pe- that's it, man. I I know a lot of <laughs> that's people. That's the one. I, I I agree. I I know a lot of people hate him. I know a lot of people hate him or hate the hype or whatever, you know. But I yeah. think the hype is deserved. I think he's the real deal. But it's, been, it's a great test. But it's it's a it's a great test. It's been a lot of time off and did does is COVID impacting him at all? I will say before I before I jumped on the plane this morning, I watched all the the embeddeds and all that stuff and and uh I, I, he did look a little I, maybe I'm being maybe it's just cuz I haven't seen him in a while, but he looked like thin to me almost, man. I was like, "Oh, has he dropped any muscle?" I, I don't know. I'm just I'm intrigued. That's that's what cuz I believe if he's back to 100%, he is going to be a problem, but as you said, Li Jinglong is a, a a guy that we've loved forever, man. That he's going to put you in a yeah. scrap. Leech is awesome. That's going to be one hell of a fight. I mean, if Hamza doesn't watch it and he eats too many of those strikes, he, he I mean, he's Leech just destroys dudes when he when he uh hits too hits them too many times and he's tough as nails. Uh he could take a good punch. It's just a matter of can he can he stay standing? Can he keep himself vertical? And that's gonna be the biggest uh the biggest thing. But that fight, when I look at some of the other ones, that's the fight that easily I think stands out just for in terms of um just a lot of hype and just a lot of like intrigue, plus, I think. Just intrigue personal is interest, word, you, know? you know. Yeah, intrigue. There you go. Um of course, uh, it's going to be good to see Amanda Hebus. Of course. Too bad we're not there to, to hear her very contagious laugh that very she contagious laugh. loves to do everywhere. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, that's a good fight, too. I'm telling you right now. Amanda, I think Amanda, that is a good fight. I think Amanda has to keep that one standing. I think it, that, even though Amanda's good on the ground, yeah. I think I, Vanna Janjihova, you and I were talking about her yesterday. It sucks because like, people talk shit, you know what I mean, about her appearance, yeah. and it sucks. She is good, bro. She her she grappling is, is insane. super good. Yep. People people don't give her enough credit, you know. Um she is she's a fucking stud, man. Uh and and, and Amanda in my book, I I think I picked Amanda in our staff picks, but that's just cuz I love her personality. Yeah. Um Verna can literally go in there and win this and and it could be it could be a lot easier than we think, but I think Amanda's got some really good skills when it gets on the ground, but if she tries to keep it striking, I think Verna's got the edge. Um, unless, unless she just sort of, sort of slacks. I think she's just been through tougher fights. Um, and it's, it's, it's all in Amanda, depending on what Amanda shows up, if she's going to win or not. But if, if Jandaroba pulls out the victory, I'm not going to be surprised at all. I I just don't think enough people give her credit for how tough and dangerous that she actually is. And she's 17 and two crazy. I mean, you don't get to 17 and two without being really, really good. (laughs) She's really, really good. She's good. I, uh, I will say I'm anxious to see Ankalaev back in action, man. I think that dude is. I think that dude's legit, man. Magomed Ankalaev yeah. is uh, is legit as well. So it's a good card, man. It's a really good card. I'm excited for it. Uh, ESPN Plus, so no pay per view uh, early in the day. Uh, so looking forward to that. And then uh, it's free. It's free. It's free. It's free. Dana says it's free. <laughs> it's so funny, but he's like, but it's behind a paywall. He's, he's like, it's basically free. It's free. You I already mean, got. ESPN we're never going to get anything. We're never. Yeah, we're never. Yeah. If you don't have ESPN Plus, what the fuck? At this point, yeah. like, you haven't been watching all these fight nights and everything, and let alone you, you would have been able to watch the PFL yesterday. Um, if you don't have ESPN, come on, brah, get the ESPN. But we're never going to get. I mean, this is this is the cheapest you're ever going to get a pay per view at ever. Yep. You know, so Dana made a good point. You know, if, if you could put a pay per view caliber fight on ESPN or practically free TV, uh, you got to take advantage of it. I mean, and uh, this is a really, really good. It's a good card, man. Um, top to bottom, I mean, it's 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 a really, really good card. Yep. It should be a lot of fun. It's going to make getting up earlier a little bit better because I think we're going to see action right from the get go. This doesn't look like a slow build card. This looks like a Get your shit running, you know. Maybe put a little whiskey in your coffee early on, <laughs> and just 
just start the day strong. I like just go co- hard. Well, hey, I don't I don't have to call fights that night now, so I might I might take you up on that offer. Oh, just fuck it, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> oh man! All right, we're looking forward to it. All right, listen, it is uh, UFC 267. Like I said, MMA Chunky will have full coverage. We don't have uh, on site. We do have uh, Fatter Hanun over there, but she's doing a little side gig. So we got we, we're, we're kind of we're, we're patching it together. Fortunately, the the USC yeah. is helping us out with some footage and things like that. So we got full coverage. It's just not, none of us that are used to seeing, but we'll be back at it. USC 268, myself and and Mike Bond will be there as uh, Cold Coffee continues to search for a new place to uh, to take the expansion. Hopefully, we'll have something that way. Hopefully, it's a, it's the never ending battle, man. Shit just gets snapped up as quick as as it can be. There was a place that just went on the market like yesterday or like in the beginning of the morning. And I was like, this is perfect, just like I've said on the other places. Yeah. And it's it's under contract today, so it's that's how quickly everything happens and it's just it's like uh but i do want to say uh because i'm gonna get this done early and get this out tomorrow morning bright and early um after the ceremonial weigh-ins at nine eastern unless we change the time uh mike's gonna do a live stream with Farah on um on our uh, junkie YouTube. Okay. So if you want to have a little sort of coverage of there and her on the ground and getting some insight of what she's saying, um, tune into that. But hopefully you guys heard this by then <laughs> or it's going to be old news. But Or uh, catch the replay on there. the YouTube channel. Or catch the replay. <laughs> You're so smart. It's this free. This is why we keep you around. It's free. It's, it's, it's free. It's free. And it's free. It's free. <laughs> uh, and if you don't want to let it be free, head on over to patreon.com and uh, – Support the show over there. We appreciate (laughs) y'all. Thanks for listening.